Hi, and welcome to Level Up, where we show you how to solve problems with Google Cloud Platform hands-on. Today I'll be demonstrating a pattern from Prakar, one of our solutions architects based out of India. Prakar's written a clear, easy-to-follow guide that demonstrates one way to serve web application traffic in Google Kubernetes Engine using preemptible virtual machines, or PVMs. These are affordable, short-lived compute instances suitable for your fault-tolerant workloads. Using them to handle portions of your web traffic can be an effective way to keep costs down, but it does require some extra planning and design. A PVM may be preempted at any time after sending a 30-second shutdown warning and has a maximum possible uptime of 24 hours. So when using PVMs, we'll need to take steps to make sure that user requests are not disrupted. Following Prakar's guide, we'll see how to accomplish this using Traffic Director, together with two node pools in GKE, one made of standard VMs and one made of preemptible VMs. We'll write our application to use the container pre-stop lifecycle hook that an eviction event triggers as a signal to exit cleanly. Traffic Director will handle the retries and timeouts to make it seamless to the end user. I'll start off with this empty project. I've already enabled the products we'll be using in this demo. In a Cloud Shell terminal, I'll create a GKE cluster with two node pools, one containing standard and one standard four VMs, and one containing the same instance shape, but using preemptible VMs. First, let's have a look at the layers involved in removing PVMs from the cluster without user impact. The PVM nodes will need to have two daemon sets running. The first prevents the Kubernetes node management process, kubelet, from shutting down before our web application has had the opportunity to gracefully exit. The second one is the Kate's node termination handler. As mentioned before, we receive a 30 second warning when a PVM is being preempted and will be shut down. But that happens at the GCP metadata level, while our code is running inside an isolated container environment in a pod in Kubernetes. To wire up the notification to our application, we'll run the Kate's node termination handler agent in our GKE cluster. This watches for preemption notices. When it sees one, it tells Kubernetes not to schedule any new pods on the PVM and to begin eviction of the pods currently running there. We'll need to modify the provided template to give our pods a slightly longer graceful termination period than the default. This handler needs some specialized permissions to perform its function, so we'll also apply the provided RBAC role definition. Do note that the Kate's node termination handler is an open source project and is not a Google Cloud product. Now let's deploy our application. First, we'll configure firewall rules so that Traffic Director will be able to health check our pods. Then we'll deploy our web application. Okay, these look good. Now let's turn our attention to configuring Traffic Director. Two network endpoint groups were automatically created in our previous steps. Let's store these in environment variables to make them easier to add to the Traffic Director config later. Time to create the health check. Looks good, now we'll populate our project and network endpoint groups into the Traffic Director config example. This demo configuration splits the user traffic 7525 between the PVM and standard node pools. Finally, we can create the Traffic Director service. This requires us to configure a URL map, HTT proxy, and forwarding rule. I'm moving quickly through the configuration of Traffic Director here, so please check the additional details in the description when you're ready to move beyond this example. Okay, so GKE services running in both of our node pools can now be load balanced by Traffic Director. Let's make the load balancer with an edge proxy to act as a gateway for user traffic. This normally takes a few minutes to finish up, so I'm going to fast forward a bit. Okay, ready to go. All right, back in Cloud Shell, let's validate that the preemption won't interrupt user traffic. In this window, you can watch the logs coming from my application pods, and in this window, I'll use httpperf to generate 20 requests per second for a few minutes. And while that's running, I'll use this window to manually simulate a preemption event. Okay, first notice in the logs that my application pod on the PVM has received the graceful exit signal, and it's now failing its health check. Traffic Director will see this and know that it needs to be removed from load balancing. After waiting a few seconds for in-flight requests to complete, the pod shuts down. Notice how the standard VM stayed up throughout and the Traffic Director transparently redirected the user requests to the pod running there. Now let's look at the final output from httpperf. Notice how all the requests were serviced, even with our pod shutting itself down during the preemption simulation. Looks like we've achieved our goal of no user impact. So, now you can see how you can configure a cost-effective node pool of PVMs for GKE to handle web application traffic. 
Be sure to carefully consider the split between standard and preemptible node pools so that you have enough capacity in case of preemption. Prakar's full written guide, linked in the description below, has more detailed instructions and qualifications to work through before using this pattern for production traffic. And that's all for this episode of Level Up, with special thanks to Prakar for sharing his hard work with us. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and click subscribe if you'd like to get notified when the next one comes out. Thanks, and see you again next time.